Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of this inexpensive Dell Office PC that I recently picked up on eBay for $155 shipped to the door. I'm a big fan of these mini office PCs, but I've never had a Dell version. This is an Optiplex 3050, and you can find these for cheaper or more expensive. It really depends on your configuration. But this one here, like I mentioned, was $155 shipped to the door. We have a cheaper Enlin 128GB SSD. It did have Windows installed on it. And uh, you can swap this out, no problem at all. It's a 2.5 inch drive. Mechanical or SSD will work. Now with the 3050, this also has an M.2 slot. And this one came with 8GB of RAM. And luckily, this is running in dual channel. Sometimes, if you pick one of these up, you might only have one 8 gig stick, or if you go with a 4 gig model, you're only going to have one stick. Dual channel is definitely going to help out this built-in GPU, and speaking of that, this is actually powered by a 7th gen i5 CPU. This is the 7500T, the lower powered version, but it does have those built-in Intel UHD 630 graphics. And on paper, this should do a really great job with emulation. It has a maximum boost clock of 3.3. We only have four cores here, no extra threads, but for Dreamcast, PSP, GameCube, Wii, and even PS2, we should be able to get some pretty decent performance. Now, along with this mini PC, I also picked up a 2.4 gigahertz, really cheap controller. These are eight bucks on Amazon and eBay, and you can get like a two pack for around 15 to 16. I would highly recommend getting a higher quality controller, but I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible. And all in with what you see now, this was under $163. Now this is not going to be a tutorial video, but if this does work out, I'll do a full tutorial and show you how to set this up. But for this little PC here, we're going to be running an operating system called Batocera. If you're not familiar with Batocera, basically it's a Linux-based emulation operating system, kind of like RetroPie that you would run on the Raspberry Pi, but this does run on x86 platforms like this mini Dell we have here. So I've already installed it to that 128GB SSD. And with something like this, or an operating system like this, I think the best bet would be use a mechanical drive, because you can get a 1TB for much cheaper, that way you can store a lot more games. And this is a very lightweight operating system, so running it from a mechanical drive will work out just fine. So let's let this thing boot up. I've got everything installed, and like I mentioned, this is not a tutorial video, but if this does work out and this little PC performs like I'm hoping it will, I will make a full tutorial. So come on, I got a lot of stuff installed here. And there we have it. As you see, we're using Emulation Station. This uses some standalone emulators and RetroArch in the background to run our games. And real quick, let's go into the settings, and I'll show you that we're using this little mini PC here. It's the i5-7500T. If I go to Information, you can see that we have that i5-7500T, base clock of 2.7 GHz, with a boost up to 3.3. This operating system is fully customizable. We do have different themes that we can download. I've installed a few here just to show you. The first one we took a look at was the stock carbon theme, but this one's known as Epic Noir, and it's one of my favorites when it comes to Botocera, but we do have several that we can choose from. We can download them directly from within the settings of Botocera as long as you're connected online. And by the way, with this little PC here, I do have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working. I'm also getting sound over HDMI, and that's something that's really important when trying to get one of these mini PCs to work with these operating systems. Basically, we have everything working with this little Dell 3050. In this video, I wanted to test some of the higher-end emulators, Dreamcast, PSP, we'll go with some GameCube, some Wii, and even some PS2. If we can get good performance, this would totally be worth doing, but uh, that's really why I'm making this first video here. I want to see if it would be worth picking one of these up. We do have everything working, but we really need to check out the performance. And just to give you a look here, we do have sound working over HDMI. Just turn the menu music off. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay. Uh, first up, let's go with something easy to run. We'll do PSP, but I will be turning this up to 3x resolution. We'll test a few more games while I'm filming the screen here, but I do want to plug this into my game capture just to make it easier on me. So the first one we'll go with, let's do, uh, let's do Burnout Legends. Go ahead and launch this. And you see the FPS on screen, I just have this turned on in the developer settings. This can be totally disabled. So let's go ahead and jump right into some gameplay. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. So this is using the standalone version of PPSSPP. I'm using the OpenGL backend, but we can swap the Vulkan if we want to. This was just performing really well. And I am at 3x resolution. 
This is not a super hard game to run, I consider this a mid-range game, and we're running at full speed. But yeah, we definitely need to test out some harder to run games like Chains of Olympus, and we'll get into that in just a second. But like I mentioned, I do want to plug this into my game capture, just so we can get a better look at everything. I know it's kind of hard to see that FPS up in the top. While you're playing a game, press start and select, and it'll exit the game, bring us right back into emulation station. And from here, we can scroll through and start something else up. Next up, we got one of the harder ones to run, Chains of Olympus, still using that standalone version of PPSSPP. I did swap over to Vulcan from OpenGL, and we're at 2x. I went up to 3x, but I did notice a few stutters here and there, so 2x is kind of going to be the sweet spot, at least with Bado Sarah. But it's working great. Next on the list we have Dreamcast, I'm using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch, and you might notice that this is only at 50 and that's because this is the European version. But when it comes to Dreamcast on a system like this, whether you're using Flycast or Redream, you're not going to have any trouble, even upscaled over 1080p. Moving over to Sega Saturn, this is another one that performs really well on this little 7500T using the Yobase and Shiro core inside of RetroArch, and here we have Sega Rally running at full speed. I had a good feeling it would do Saturn really well. Here's GameCube using the standalone version of Dolphin with the Vulcan back end. 720p, Automotalista, which is kind of one of my go-tos. This is a harder one to emulate, especially on lower-end chips. We're running at 60 with that 720p upscale, and it's working just fine. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. I know it's a bit hard to see, but we are at full speed here. Another one I always like to test is F-Zero GX for GameCube. Still using that Vulcan back in, 720p, outstanding performance here. Dolphin was working great with GameCube, and we're getting the same kind of performance here with Wii games. This is Sonic Colors uh, on the original console. It only ran at 30 FPS, so that's what we have here. But we're still at 720p and getting great performance. And the final one I wanted to test here with that Dolphin emulator is Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. When you're using lower end systems and there's lots of particles on screen, this game does slow down a bit. But even with that 720p upscale, we're still at 60, even with the special moves going. And finally here in Badosair, we have PS2, and I kind of thought that this would be the case. When you're using PCSX2, that's the emulator we have going here for PS2, in Linux, you have to use OpenGL. We don't have any kind of Vulkan implementation yet, and with Linux, we can't use DX11. But this doesn't mean that PS2 won't perform well on this machine. You just have to be running Windows with that DirectX 11 back in. And this is kind of where I'm torn between these Linux-based emulation operating systems on these lower-end machines. Because when it comes down to it, in my experience, for emulators like PC SX2, when you're working with a lower-end CPU and GPU, it does perform better with DirectX 11. We just can't pump out enough OpenGL performance with this UHD 630 to get great performance in Linux. But when it comes to Windows, it will perform much better. But this doesn't mean that every single PS2 game is going to run at full speed. Because as you can see here, this is Gran Turismo 4. Even with DX11 in Windows, we're still struggling. But there's still a lot of PS2 games that'll be fully playable on a little machine like this. And the final thing I wanted to test here was 3DS. Here's Citra, 2x resolution. I'm still with Windows right now, but this does use the OpenGL backend, so we should get similar performance on Linux. I just already had it set up ready to go. And performance is actually decent with 3DS on this mini PC. Huh? 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 
So I gotta say, this Mini Optiplex 3050 does a great job with emulation, be it in Linux or Windows, but if you want to do that higher end stuff, I would definitely suggest using Windows and something like LaunchBox, but in the end, it's really up to you. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if I was able to get good performance out of this, I will do a tutorial on installing Botosir and getting everything set up, and as you saw, we got great performance with this little machine, so definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have a video coming soon. And in the meantime, if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But if you're interested in picking one of these up, your best bet is to head over to eBay. I'll leave a few links in the description. You're going to have to put some bids in to get one of these for cheap, but there are a ton of them for sale. These are the Tiny Optiplex 3050s with the i5-7500T. You can get these fully configured up to like 32 gigabytes of RAM. But 8 gigs of RAM for a little emulation machine is more than enough. You can get them with hard drives, without hard drives. It's really up to you, but I will leave a few eBay links in the description in case you're interested in learning more about this. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.